Hey there everybody, in this video we're gonna talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an amazing platform for you to be marketing. So if you're doing B2B marketing, or if you're actually trying to find customers who are professionals, LinkedIn is a fantastic platform. We're gonna go over some actually six key elements that you need to consider when you're doing digital marketing on LinkedIn, when you're using LinkedIn as a social platform, and it's going to help you to not only get more leads, but also close more sales. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna have a very specific strategy that you can use to approach your clients and customers who are spending time on LinkedIn. So let's get into this video today. So if you're not using LinkedIn, you should absolutely start using LinkedIn. LinkedIn is growing in popularity and um, the stats are pretty impressive. If you go, I'll link below um, LinkedIn's usage stats, but time on site is up, users are up, they have been introducing new video features and people are engaging a lot more. I've seen um, just from my personal profile and content that I'm putting on LinkedIn that it goes really, really far. It actually reminds me a lot of Facebook, like what it was a couple years ago, as far as the organic distribution that you can get. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about main like strategy types um, for LinkedIn. So if you are interested in very specific tactics, at the end of this video on the end screen, I'm going to put in the next video that I produce, how to automatically generate contacts, how to automatically do messaging, extract profile data, and all kinds of things like that. But this video is specifically about the general principles that are gonna help you to be successful in doing um, marketing on LinkedIn. So first of all, you need to think about LinkedIn as what is the platform all about? What are the people doing there on LinkedIn? So LinkedIn is a lot like a networking mixer and people are hanging out on LinkedIn so that they can be meeting other business professionals. But if you think about, if you've ever been to networking events and I've been to several networking events, in general, it's always a little bit kind of weird. How do you make networking events work for you? But I think if you actually think about it, like you're going to a conference or you're going to a network event, that's kind of the mentality. Everybody's there to sell each other, basically. It's not like Facebook where people are hanging out to keep up with their friends and family or Instagram where people are there to see beautiful things in general. Um, people are there to sell their products, to sell themselves as professionals and um, hopefully get their, their brand and their name out there. Since that's the goal of everybody, you have to approach it from that perspective. Now I found that if you are trying to help your target audience, um, content is the best way to try and get rapport and help people specifically on LinkedIn. Since everybody's kind of promoting themselves a lot, if you go out and start trying to help people, it makes you look different. One of the kind of oldest tricks in the book that I learned um, back from doing sales was that when you're at networking events, everybody starts talking about themselves. And so if you want to be interesting, now, appear interested, right? That old saying of, if you want to you know, have somebody ask about you, typically the best step is to ask about them and be genuinely interested. Now, I'm not saying that um, going out and messaging people and saying, hey, you know, Brandon, what do you do? Right, those open kind of questions are super spammy. But a good way to interact with people is to comment on their content, to ask questions about the content that they're putting out, to ask questions about the status updates that they're putting out to ask about how they're doing in their job history and their anniversaries on their, their job anniversaries and things like that, right? So thinking about how to appear different than everybody else who's just constantly out there promoting. If you're different and you seem interested and you're actually building relationships with people, you're going to have a lot more success than if you were just out there promoting your own brand and constantly shouting and telling everybody what you did, okay? So for the most part, content, I think, needs to be approached from that aspect of helpfulness. What are the main pain points that your prospects are, are struggling with and how can you help them to overcome those? And you don't have to give away everything, but giving away enough value that you're going to, you know, be showing up in their feeds and getting comments and shares and people engaging with you. I think that is very, very important. So as a platform, LinkedIn is definitely not just like a digital resume, which it kind of used to be. Now it's an actual social platform with people engaging and creating content, putting content on there. And so you need to be very helpful and useful. Not so much entertaining. Entertaining is important if you can pull it off, but it's definitely a more serious network. And um, if you want to be funny and, you know, be entertaining, there's some guys that I actually think about um, that come to mind 
They're called the Pot Brothers. They are attorney, the cannabis attorneys. Um, in California, cannabis became legal. And so they're posting videos that are 15 seconds long. And they are extremely popular. Check them out if you haven't, just to see that kind of content. And it does really, really well on LinkedIn as an example. So I said that LinkedIn is not just a virtual resume place, which it used to be. When you're creating your profile, again, people typically talk about you know, hi, my name is Brandon Brashears. I have 15 years of experience. And they start to use resume language, and it's super boring. So when people go and check out your profile, having a resume is not super helpful, especially if you're trying to sell things business to business. And so uh, framing what you do in terms of how it benefits your products is a lot more helpful. So instead of making it about yourself, you're making it about the people that you're actually going to try to help. So that's how you need to, to try and figure out what should I say in my bio and how should I be descriptive and engaging in a way that's not boring and that just doesn't talk about how great I am in you know, boring resume talk. If you think about resumes, if you've ever had to go through resumes, it is so boring to read them because they're all the same. They all talk about you know the same stupid experience they have. And in general, I know that's important when you're hiring and things, but... It's just if you can stand out from the crowd by being different and talking about how you're going to help and how your experience helps and stories about you know how you've learned how to help and, and things like that, you're going to go so much further than if you're just talking about, you know, I graduated from this college and I worked in this field for 25 years. I have this experience. That's me. That's super boring. So how can you inject your personality? How can you inject your... Um, helpfulness and your utility so that the person reading can immediately identify that they're going to want to work with you because you're going to be able to do x y and z for them instead of having to figure okay great you know bill went to university of utah four years ago and now he's doing inside sales that doesn't help me right so let's talk about how to approach um, prospects inside of linkedin linkedin has a really good search feature so you can get very narrowed on who you're targeting who you're sending invitations to. And so if you think about it like a networking event or a conference where you're trying to go to network with your prospects, if you can show up and just introduce yourself, I think that so many people that are doing LinkedIn wrong, and you, if you have a LinkedIn profile, you probably see this all the time. Recruiters are super bad at this. Um, in general, B2B sales reps are very bad at this. What they're doing is they're just going out and they're basically vomiting into the inbox of the person that they're sending a message to. And it's like, hey, here's everything that we do. I would like it a lot if you went and checked us out. Here's the link. Go buy now. Right? And a lot of times, too, when people are sending messages inside of LinkedIn, they're framing it in that, hey, could you please go do this for me? And they're sending a link. And they're asking for something right out of the gate. People don't... It comes off as, as cheesy and is salesy, and people don't like to be sold, they like to buy. So figure out how you can go out and connect with people that actually makes a connection and introduce yourself, and instead of going right for the sale right away, actually go for the relationship. Try to figure out what they need, what can help them. I'll give you an example. So I have a podcast, it's called the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. I help veterinary practices um, go and learn how to do digital marketing so that they can attract and retain their customers with digital marketing. So with LinkedIn, I have an inviter script that I use. I'm going to show you in the next video how to use this to automate your invitations and do all kinds of cool things. But what I'm doing for this funnel is I'm just trying to expand my network and introduce myself as a useful resource for digital marketing. And it's working really well. So I'm not going out and saying, hey, I do AdWords. Would you like me to do your AdWords for your practice. That's not helpful, right? What I say is, hey, my name is Brandon. I wanted to invite you to be in my network because I have a digital marketing podcast where I help practice owners and practice managers learn how to use digital marketing. By the way, it's all free. You can go check it out at veterinarymarketingpodcast.com. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions or need any help. This digital marketing stuff can be complicated. And then, sincerely, Brandon. So first of all, I'm, I'm sounding conversational. I'm offering value. I have 150 episodes that are completely free that I don't hold anything back in my podcast. I've produced that at my own expense, and I've been doing it for years and years and years. So I'm showing up, and I'm saying, hey, here's what I do. Is there anything that I can do to help? 
And then if they respond, which there's a, a high response rate to this, I'll say, hey, by the way, I have an extra resource. It's my Facebook group. We have veterinary professionals who collaborate inside of it. And so we're not just going for the sale when we're not just trying to show up and all of a sudden expect to have credibility and context. I'm trying to build an actual relationship. So it's just like if you would go into a network meeting or a conference, you'd say, hey, what's your name? Hey, Brandon, what do you do? And then you'd talk with each other. And if there was anything that was like, that's awesome. I would love to talk to you more about that. What do you do? Do you pull out the credit card machine right there and you say, hey, pay me 5,000 bucks retainer a month so that I can do your digital marketing for you. You don't say that. You say, hey, let's set up an appointment. Let's go meet on Zoom. Let's go meet for lunch one time, right? You're not going directly for the sale. That's how LinkedIn works. Think of it like a big mixer where you're trying to meet prospective clients and you're basically handing out business cards so that you can then follow up. Now that's the thing though, you have to follow up and you should have a funnel that allows people to be introduced into your brand. And not only that, once they're introduced into your brand, what's the next step that they can take to get involved with you? So for example, having easy awareness type content that people can take the next step with, that's why content is so important. It is the next step in the relationship. It's that middle ground between um, hi, how are you doing? And thanks, I'm so excited that we're going to be you're going to be doing business together. And so, what are the pieces of content that can help to fill that gap? Now, I talked about digital marketing funnels and things. If you click this card up here, you'll be able to um, check that out. But uh, just don't make the mistake of being like the overeager teenage boy who's going for, for the kill right on his first date. You shouldn't be doing that. That's super cheesy and that's not cool. You have to be professional. You have to be somebody who's not just there for the sale. You're there to help and you're going to build a relationship. You're gonna get so much more out of these relationships when you're actually being intentional about this and you're not just trying to make a quick win. So build relationships, use a funnel and have a funnel set up in place for the back end so that you can follow up. Follow up is where all the magic happens and it's the extra work that most businesses aren't doing to have success inside of LinkedIn. So listen, I hope this was helpful. By the way, my name is Brandon Brashears. I forgot to mention, I make daily marketing videos here. So if you want to grow your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. I talk about everything from LinkedIn, Facebook, pay-per-click ads, SEO, email marketing. If it has to do with digital marketing, I cover it here. So thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. And um, you're gonna wanna make sure and click it. It's about how to use Linked Helper, which is an amazing tool that can help automate your LinkedIn growth. All right, have a great day and thanks for watching the video.